So let's say, for example, you know, we've got our, our little planet uh, running, it's our program, and it's just spinning along doing whatever it does. But suddenly, all of a sudden, uh, it, there's a crash. There's a, I try and divide by zero. Suddenly, it's on fire. Uh, everything is ruined. Uh, you know, even the Antarctica uh, is on fire. I don't know how that works, but it's everything's gone to hell. So, uh, what exception handling does is make sure this does not happen. So I, I say all of a sudden, oh, well, I don't want this to happen. I don't want that to happen, you know, for obvious reasons. So what we're looking at suddenly is this idea, give me a second, boom. What we're looking at is this idea that before I even try and execute, again, if I execute it, on fire. What I want to do is I want to create a parallel world. Oh, and here's my terrible art rendition for you. Here's my, here you go. I want to recreate the world for just a second. There's, I am surely proving to you guys right now that I am a computer scientist, not a programmer, or not an artist, if you will. So what I did, what I've just done is I've said, Try. Try to run my program. If it would catch fire, if it would catch fire, catch this. And so what will happen is we can think of it almost as if a parallel universe has just been built. If, for example, I attempt this and no fire happens, all right, cool. Well, what Java actually says is, go ahead and execute this. Execute if OK. That's exactly what we're saying is, uh, first, kind of test it out in this parallel universe for me. Uh, if it ran fine there, oh, OK, all right. I, I feel safe about it now. I've seen someone else do it. I, I, I'm going to do it now. However, if I end up going to hell, uh, catch me, pull me back and go, whoa, hey, hold on for a second. Instead of executing this, here's some code, here's some code to execute instead. So how do we build this out? Of course, you know, we've got a bunch of uh, we don't use fire uh, in programming. There's enough of the steam coming out of our ears for that. But what we do is we use sort of this new structure. We start off with the try keyword. The try keyword uh, basically does that. It says create this parallel universe and then do this code. If that code works perfectly fine, excellent. Go ahead and run it again, and we'll be a-okay. However, if I have an error, if I break, what I'm needing to expect is some type of exception type, some type of exception, and I'm just going to call E. And again, this is code that I only want to happen when Otherwise, my program would crash. I'm basically trying to stop it from crashing, or at least uh, crash with a little bit more grace, if you will. Uh, think about someone like Minecraft. Minecraft is built in Java. Uh, even take a look at this error message for a second. Internal exception, Java IO dot IO exception. Received a string length longer than the maximum allowed. It, something a little too big. Now. Whatever this is for, you know, it's probably for uh, someone trying to stuff a packet uh, for our networking guys out there. But instead of Minecraft just shutting down and you know me not knowing why my program you know crashed, especially if I'm just a, an eight-year-old kid, you know Minecraft sucks all of a sudden. That's what they all sound like. 
All of you, all you eight-year-olds. Uh, you know, instead of that, we say there's an error message. We display this error message because now, when they go, Minecraft sucks, it sucks now, it's crashing all the time. It crashed back in alpha, it's crashing all the time. Uh, but now I can at least throw this error message out on the internet and go, well, what does, you know, uh, receive string length longer than maximum allowed uh, mean, especially in context of Minecraft? So this is where we would want to design out these conditional statements.